In this presentation, you will learn about the new economic policy. India's new economic policy was launched in 1991. The new policy framework reflected standard structural adjustment measures, which were advocated by the International Monetary Fund and World Bank and were applicable at the global level. In other words, it followed a basically neoliberal approach to economic policy. It was felt that these measures of economic liberalization would transform the Indian economy and trigger economic growth. Reforms in Indian economy 1991 onwards. India embarked on the project of economic liberalization and opening up of the economy to the rest of the world. This was considered to be essential in order to realize higher internal economic growth. It was necessary to have access to foreign exchange to avoid a major debt service problem in the future. Around the same time, there was disintegration of USSR, with whom India has had protective ties, and this could result in the loss of foreign markets in terms of exports, and therefore, drastic radical measures had to be undertaken to save the Indian economy. Soon after coming to power, Narasimha Rao and his finance minister, Dr. Manmohan Singh, announced the program of economic liberalization. Dr. Singh was an economist trained in neoclassical economics with specialization in international trade. His strongest asset was his flexibility in adapting to ideas and practices of market economies as well as regimes which include economic planning. The new economic policy and programs announced in 1991 included the following features. Significant reduction in import tariff. Elimination of import quotas except for consumer goods. Elimination or reduction of restrictions on foreign ownership. Currency convertibility on the trade account. Reduction in licensing requirements. Easing of regulations and red tape. Opening all industries except six to private ownership. And reduction in domestic excise taxes, among others. The NEP introduced some very fundamental changes in the previous state policy. For example, input subsidies, credit, extension services in agriculture were rolled back. Several infrastructure and services were privatized and domestic markets were opened to international trade. The consequence of this reform is that it led to foreign direct investment from companies such as Pepsi, General Motors, General Electric, International Business Machines, Coca-Cola, McDonald's, Enron, etc. There were similar investments from companies from Great Britain, Japan, Germany, mutual funds, investment banks, security firms, insurance firms, commercial banks have all invested in Indian securities. From the onset of the reforms, Indian firms were raising funds in the world capital markets and merging with one another and with foreign companies. The new economic policy has managed to control inflation and the budget deficit has come down. Scholars observed that the GDP grew at about 5% in a record time of just under three years in an environment in which it is still difficult to do business. The 1991 reforms were considered a success, so Mr. Rao and Dr. Singh continued the reform process. Universally, the reforms were appreciated in and out of India. The finance minister of the time observed that the reforms were so welcomed in the 1994-95 budget, which included reduction in customs duties, reduction in corporate tax, reduction in income tax, and a ceiling on the central bank financing of government debt beyond which the government had to go to the market. 